Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is a short video just as an introduction to the uh, website here, the Differential Diagnosis in Dermatology. Now as it says there, there are over 2,000 named diseases in dermatology. But you know, uh, a good general practitioner probably only needs to know 10 uh, skin diseases in some detail. Now you need to know all the variations because there's often quite a few of them. But the average dermatologist really only needs to know about 100 skin diseases. Sure, he can uh, ultimately diagnose a lot more than that. And he does it through this concept of setting up a differential diagnosis. But let's try and keep this simple. And all you have to do is ask yourself three questions. You know, essentially, is a rash red and scaly or red and non-scaly? Some rashes are skin colored, we'll come to those in a minute, but most inflammatory skin diseases are either red scaly or red non-scaly. Then you look and say, are there any pustules or blisters? And then you say, is this rash in a funny shape, color? Does it have a funny texture or a funny distribution? I'll go into these in a little bit of detail in a minute. So those are your three questions, red scaly, red non-scaly, any pustules or blisters, is it in a funny shape, color, texture or distribution. And then there's four mnemonics. And these mnemonics deal with the commonest of these skin diseases. First of all, the red scaly diseases. You know, a large number of the significant red scaly, uh, uh, of the significant skin diseases you're going to see are red scaly diseases. What does PM's PET stand for? Well, I used to think of Kevin Rudd, who used to be the Prime Minister of Australia, and he had a little Siamese cat. So the cat was his little pet, and the cat's name was Petal, and it sat in his lap. So we have the PM's pet, P-E-T, psoriasis, eczema, tinea, three very common red scaly diseases. The little cat's name was Petal, so A-L-A for nanular erythema, L for lupus, lichen planus, some light eruptions, and Louis syphilis. The PM's bit at the beginning. The P there stands for pityriasis. That's pityriasis rosea and pityriasis versicola. They're the two common ones. But there's a few others like pityriasis rubra pilaris and pityriasis lichenoides. But they're rarer ones. The M, the M's for mycosis fungoides, a T-cell lymphoma of the skin. And the little S is for solar damage. Because in Australia, we have people with so much solar damage that when you look at them, you think they've got a red scaly rash. Now, we'll go into all of this in great detail in the red scaly diseases section across here. But what about the red non-scaly diseases? What's the mnemonic for that? Well, it's see you later at the Department of Veterans Affairs, Evie, where Evie's your girlfriend. So see you later, Department of Veterans Affairs, Evie. And just briefly, C for cellulitis, U for urticaria, L for, again, lupus and light eruption. DVA, D for drugs, V for a viral or bacterial exanthem, and A again for an annular erythema, because some of them don't have scale. And EV, E for erythema multiforme, V for vasculitis, the other E for erythema in the dosum, and I for infiltrates. There's a lot of infiltrative skin diseases, admittedly rare ones, are red and non-scaly. What about pustules? If it has to be a pustule right from the beginning, not a clear fluid-filled vesicle that becomes infected, but a pustule right from the beginning. Pustules are II, infective or inflammatory. Now, infective can be viral, bacterial, or fungal. And inflammatory, normally it's either a drug reaction or it's pustular psoriasis. Now, sure, there are some other rarer inflammatory diseases, and we deal with that um, a little bit later. What about blistering diseases or vesicular or blistering diseases? Small fluid filled vesicles that may get bigger or join together and form a bigger blister. Well, the mnemonic's ICI, Imperial Chemical Industries. And it's important that two of the I's are exactly the same as the ones for pustules. So, infective and inflammatory. And inflammatory here is also immunological. And the C in the middle is for contact dermatitis. So, infective, contact dermatitis, and inflammatory or immunological. There are some immunobullous diseases, you know, where the immune system produces antibodies or cells that attacks 
the dermoepidermal junction attacks uh, molecules there that hold the two layers together. And so your epidermis floats up as a blister in these immunobullous diseases. And the commonest is this condition here. Yeah. Uh, look at these strong fluid-filled blisters here on a red base. That's bullous pemphigoid. All of these, there's a section over here dealing with them. And we'll have a little video for each of these sections later on. So, three questions. Red scaly, red non-scaly. Pustules or blisters. Funny shape, colour, texture or distribution. Four mnemonics. PM's pet. Little cat called Petal. See you later at the Department of Veterans Affairs, Evie. I.I. and I.C.I. Just looking at these images, by the way. That's uh, rosacea. This, these are pustules in the face in a condition called rosacea. That's psoriasis, a red scaly disease. That's astyototic eczema, drying of the skin uh, when you get uh, old and uh, uh, your skin gets too dry in the winter months. Down below here, we've got some of these mnemonics in a little bit more. Ah, sorry, that was just <laughs> an overview of the uh, of the uh, that image there just in a little bit more detail to show it. There are those strong blisters. There's the small pustules of uh, rosacea. There's these large plaques, red scaly plaques of psoriasis. And this is astyototic eczema. OK. Now, this goes into uh, a description, just as I've given you it there in some detail, so you can have a little look at that. Blisters and vesicles. I've mentioned here some rashes are skin colored and scaly. The vast majority of inflammatory skin diseases are going to be red, but you will get some skin diseases where it's skin colored and scaly. And the classics are the ichthyoses. Um, these are where you're born with abnormal skin that dry and form scaly, especially in the winter months. And the commonest condition is ichthyosis vulgaris, an autosomal dominant disease that gives you fish-like scales on your lower legs and your arms, particularly in the winter months. But there are a few other inherited uh, ichthyosis as well, like X-linked ichthyosis and lamellar ichthyosis um, and epidermolytic hyperkeratosis. There's, there's a few of them, but they're very rare. Um, and if you're going to see a skin-colored scaly rash, it's likely to be ichthyosis vulgaris. The skin-colored non-scaly diseases, most, there's not many of those at all. Virtually all skin diseases will give you some degree of infiltration. And all of these infiltrative diseases I mentioned here are really quite rare. Um, and they'll generally give you a bit of redness as well. So it's really just skin-colored and scaly you have to think about. Now, I've said that for other morphologies, such as a funny shape, color, or distribution, what I'd suggest you do is you just go up here and click on the on the links for those. Um, some rashes are a funny color. You know, there's the purplish rash of lichen planus. Um, there's the violaceous rash around the eyes uh, that's purplish as well of uh, dermatomyositis. There are some skin uh, diseases that are yellow, such as the xanthomatosis, where fat's deposited in the skin. And there's a few other uh, very rare skin diseases where the, the skin's slightly green. Now, I've commented here that if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about skin disease terminology, have a look at this little tutorial from Logical Images. It goes into pustules and vesicles and blisters and shows you examples of them. So if you're not sure of your uh, terminology, have a little look at that tutorial there. And if you're a GP and you have access to the Skin Consult website, then you can start looking at conditions and the distribution, certain conditions occurring in certain areas. And that's a, a very important aspect of diagnosis as well. Certain diseases tend to be found in certain areas of the skin. And you can approach skin disease by learning a bit more about the particular problems that occur in these areas. And lastly, for the expert diagnosticians, have a little look at this page here, um, the diagnosis page of Global Skin Atlas. You can put in a variety of skin morphologies, just not just the simple ones I've mentioned there, of blisters and pustules and vesicles. Um, you can put that in, and it will give you a list of uh, conditions that are associated with those morphologies. Okay, I hope this has been just a short introduction to the 
three questions and the four mnemonics. And what I now suggest is that you just work your way down through these labels on this side, starting with the red scaly diseases, where we'll be discussing the PM's pet, a little cat called Petal. See you there. Thank you.